today we're going to be talking about zero and negative exponents. What I'm going to go ahead and do is give you some examples of some values and then we're going to see the patterns that follow. First thing I'm going to do is start out with 2 to the 5th divided by 2 to the 5th. Now you might look at that and say, well, um, 2 to the 5th and 2 to the 5th are the same exact thing, so whenever you divide anything by itself, it's going to be 1. And that kind of leads to where we're going. But if you take our rules that we discussed earlier, I can rewrite this as 2 to the 5th divided by 2 to the 5th. I have same bases. I'm going to subtract the exponents here. So I have 2 to the 5 minus 5. That's going to get me 2 to the 0. And that equals 1. Similarly to what we thought it would be because you're dividing the same by itself. Same thing if I take a to the 3rd and divide it by a to the 3rd. I have a to the 3 minus 3. And that's going to get me a to the 0. And that equals 1. And this kind of relates to our first rule. Um, a non-zero number raised to the zero power is equal to 1. So an important rule here. We'll revisit this in a moment. What happens, now I'm going to take 7 to the 3rd divided by 7 to the 5th. In this case, I have 7 to the 3rd. If we were to rewrite it as a fraction, just to show what's going to be happening here, you'll see I have more 7s in the, de the denominator than I do the numerator. And when I subtract 3 minus 5, I'm going to get 7 to the negative second. 7 to the negative second. Well, there's another way I can go ahead and rewrite this 7 to the negative second. And why don't we go ahead and talk about that now. So I ha there are two separate rules you have to write down again. Uh, the first, anything to the power of 0 is going to equal 1, except when that base equals 0. It can't happen. You can't have 0 to the power of 0 equal 1. Why not? Well, I'm going to go ahead and take a sidebar here for a moment. Let's say you have 0 to the 4th divided by 0 to the 4th. So that means we have 0 to the 4 divided by 0 to the 4, but we have to stop here because what you can see is that I'm trying to divide by 0. Dividing by 0 is bad. Try it in your calculator. It won't let you do it. That is undefined. And then our other rule here is whenever you have a base raised to a negative power, we can make that power positive by putting it in the denominator of a fraction. Again, as long as that base does not equal 0. So let's take a step back to this problem where we had 7 to the negative second. I almost always want to express my exponents positively. So what I can do is write it as 1 over 7 to the second. And what that's going to get me, if we had to evaluate, not just simplify, leaving uh, exponential notation as 1 over 49. And again, if, we're, if you want to look at it another way, Let's take this example, 7 to the third, so we have 7 times 7 times 7, over 7 times 7 times 7 times 7 times 7. So once we start canceling values here, we can see, oh, I'm left with, I'm going to have 1 here as that placeholder, 7 divided by 7, 7 divided by 7, 7 divided by 7, that's leaving me with 1. So I have 1 over 7 times 7 or 1 over 49. So that negative exponent, something really important to consider here. A negative exp exponent does not make your value negative itself. What it does is it just shows that that value is going to be less than 1. So back to our rules over here. Let's take a look at some examples. So I have 13 to the 0 minus 2 to the negative third. Now if I'm looking to evaluate this value, first thing I know is that 13 to the power of 0 is 1, and then I'm going to subtract 2 to the negative third. 
I'm not really sure how I'm going to do that, except if I take it a step at a time, I know I can rewrite this as 1 over 2 to the third. So all of a sudden, this problem becomes 1 minus 1 eighth, and that's much easier to do, and I can get my answer. Here I have 13 to the negative fourth times 13 to the seventh. Now you might think, well, why don't you just rewrite that as 1 over 13 to the fourth and then multiply that by 13 to the seventh. But there is a rule that we know, right? You have similar bases, and you're multiplying those two together. So what happens? Just add the exponents. Negative 4 plus 7, and that's going to get me 13 to the third. That's it in simplified form. If I need to evaluate, then I would go ahead and take it one step further. But we're just simplifying for now. Finally, I have this problem. And again, after each problem, if you want to go ahead and pause and do the work yourself, you are more than welcome to do so. I have 9m divided by 3m to the negative second. All right. Well, first thing I want to do is go ahead and make, let's see, if I look at this as a fraction, I see that I have 9m divided by 3m to the negative second. Now in this case, I can see that it is not 3m in parentheses to the negative second, but rather just m to the negative second. So I can go ahead and break this up into two different steps here. I have 9 divided by 3 and m divided by m to the negative second. So if I'm using my exponential rules properly here, that means I have m to the first divided by m to the negative second. So I can take so let's start back over here, and I have 9 divided by 3, that's 3, and then I have m to the first minus a negative second, which leaves me then with 3m to the third. Again, using rules of exponential properties helps to make things a lot easier in life. And here's a challenge problem. This is going to get interesting because it affects the rules of exponents and it gives you a little shortcut as well if you can figure that shortcut out on yourself. Again, by yourself. We'll talk about this one tomorrow. Um, I want you to go ahead and evaluate, so don't just simplify it, but evaluate the following.